Something very interesting is going on in Germany. It's the same thing that's happening right now in China. The popularity of plug-in hybrids is crashing, while the popularity of electric vehicles is surging. It's pretty much perfect timing for Tesla opening their factory in Berlin. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Great to have you here on the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back to everyone else. What is going on in Germany? Well, 22% EV market share was the reported number for January, but that's not quite what it sounds. And I'll share with you why that is. Plug-in passenger car market started the year with a small increase over the same month last year, with almost 40,000 units registered in January, representing an 8% increase in sales. However, the main culprits for the lukewarm performance were plug-in hybrids, which were down 8% year on year. Battery electric vehicles grew 28% to 20,900, with pure electric starting the year ahead of plug-in hybrids with 53% versus 47%. So there's a very big shift here going on towards electric vehicles. But remember, there are a wait list for almost every electric vehicle in Germany right now. So it's going to be very interesting to see when there is actually enough vehicles to start to meet some of this demand. Clearly, the demand is moving towards electric rather than plug-in hybrids. This performance allowed the plug-in vehicle share to start the year at 22% in total, with battery electric vehicles alone hitting 11%. However, that is below the 2021 market share of 26% plug-in vehicles, 14% battery electric vehicles, for the entire year of 2021. But you can expect those numbers to climb soon compared to last year's result. We might even see 40% plus months in Germany this year and 50% plus months by 2023. Now looking at these sales in January, there's a big surprise in the number one position. The Fiat 500e, which by the way, I think is a very cool looking car, came first with 1,261 registrations. That was a first monthly win for Stellantis in the German car market. The multinational conglomerate placed a second model on the podium, with the Opel Corsa EV ending the month in third across Europe. Stellantis is having a strong start to the year. What, what exactly is going on? Well, one thing's going on here. The only vehicles that are getting sales are the ones that companies can supply. This is really, really not, it just, this just shows you, doesn't it? How this is not about who's making the best EVs. This is what Tesla have even, Elon Musk has said himself, even other CEOs have said, this is not about making the best EV. This is about just getting an EV to customers. Here you go, handing one over. That's what it comes down to, production capacity. Obviously, Germans, uh, you really think that their favorite EV is the Fiat 500e? or this third favorite EV is the Opel Corsa? I don't think so. Clearly, if they could, they'd be buying ID3s and ID4s and Tesla Model 3s and Tesla Model Ys and you know Ionic 5s and other German vehicles. The Fiat 500e, if you polled Germans and said, what electric car do you want? I don't think a lot of them would be saying that. Don't get me wrong, I do like it, but I really don't think that would be a popular German EV. It just comes down to the fact that supply, 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 supply. The silver medal went to the Mercedes GLC plug-in hybrid, which had 1,181 registrations, giving the German SUV an early lead over the remaining competition in the plug-in hybrid category. Just off the podium, we have two Hyundais, with the Kona EV in fourth, and the recently introduced Ionic 5 in fifth. The best-selling Volkswagen was only sixth, with the ID3 getting 942 registrations, or about half of what it had a year ago. It had 1,800 registrations in January 2021. So clearly, you can see here, it's all just about manufacturing capacity right now. And clearly, Tesla don't rank here at all in the in the top 20 at all, period, because they ship their vehicles in the first month of the quarter. So if you're wondering why Tesla don't rank, that's the key reason. There are no Tesla vehicles in Germany right now to sell. In the second half of the table, the main surprise, say Clean Technica, is the appearance of the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross plug-in hybrid in number 16, with the compact crossover scoring a record 758 registrations. It seems there is still life to Mitsubishi in Europe. Well, if you don't already know, I made a video about Mitsubishi and they're, to be honest, they're almost a dead company. Realistically, 
uh, in terms of saying there's still life to Mitsubishi in Europe, it's not really true. The reality is that um, uh, Germans just don't have a whole lot of choice right now when it comes to cars. There's not a lot. And there's a lot of demand. There's not enough vehicles to meet that demand. That will change over the next couple of years. A mention also goes out to two Mercedes models. Besides the usual presence of the A250e compact model in number 19, this time we also have the GLE, Mercedes GLE plug-in hybrid large SUV, which showed up in the number 13 position with 798 registrations. Mercedes had a very positive month in Germany. Outside the top 20, a mention goes to the number 21 Opel Mokka E, which scored 661 sales. The stylish crossover is sure to become a familiar face in the table once its ramp up is complete. The Peugeot E208, a relative, is also doing well with 580 registrations in January. The Audi Q4 e-tron had a good month with 637 registrations, and the Dacia Spring had 501 deliveries. Those two models will become familiar faces in the top 10, I believe, once their production is ramped up. Dacia Spring will be extremely popular just based on price. It's the cheapest EV in Europe right now. And clearly it didn't rank in the top 20 simply because there's not enough cars to go around. They need to make millions more of them in order to meet demand. Maybe not millions, but at least hundreds and hundreds of thousands more. Now, one other interesting thing happened in Germany in January. Chinese company Lincoln Co. delivered the first 197 units of its plug-in hybrid model, the O1. It's going to be interesting to see how well the Chinese compact crossover succeeds in the largest market in Europe. I don't think it's going to do that well, to be honest. I think it's more of a temporary thing. I think Xpeng, Neo, and BYD will all do much, much better in the long run. So will other Chinese brands such as Volvo, Polestar, Zika, you know, all GLE brands, which by the way, sorry for you, those of you who are going to say, no, 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 they're, they're, they're Swedish. They're, no, they're not. They're Chinese. Yeah. Even if the company is listed in Sweden, it's still Chinese. Sorry. Chinese compact crossover succeeds. SAIC's MG is taking its time landing in Germany. This time, it's the turn of Geely's Lincoln Co. to land in Germany after already being established in a number of European markets. And will this type of behavior become standard procedure among Chinese companies? Absolutely. China plans to invade Europe this year and next year with many, many, many EVs. And to be honest, I think the Europeans are more than happy to buy them. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. In the brand ranking, Mercedes with 13.1%, profited with strong results across its extensive lineup to start the year in the lead, followed by BMW at number two with 10%. And last year's winner, Volkswagen, had only 9.9% with a slow month, ending January in third place. To be honest, that shocks me. Just off the podium, we have Audi in fourth with 8.5%, followed by the best-selling fan. And in fifth, Opel ended 5.2%. Now, what about groups? Well, here, Volkswagen are well ahead of their next closest competitor. Volkswagen had 25.8% of the market starting the year in the front of the pack, followed from afar by Mercedes, who had 16.2%. Stellantis had 15.5% in third, and BMW was in fourth with 12.5%. Now, Clean Technica are saying that Stellantis could become the surprise of the year in Europe and could actually challenge Volkswagen's domination on the continent. That has already started to happen in the overall market, as one can see below when looking at Europe's 2021 top 10. Number one was the Volkswagen Golf. Number two was the Peugeot 208. Number three, the Dacia Sandero. Number four, the Renault Clio. Number five, the Peugeot 2008. Number six, the Volkswagen T-Roc. Seventh, Toyota Yaris. Eighth, Opel Vauxhall Corsa. Ninth, the Tiguan, Volkswagen Tiguan. And tenth, the Fiat 500. As you can see, Stellantis placed four models in the 2021 top 10 in Europe. That's more than any other OEM. Importantly, four of those models had electric versions. So as the overall market merges with the EV market, expect the EV share of the total sales to steadily increase in those models, creating a seamless transition to EVs. Or will it be? No. It's not going to be seamless, that's for sure. But it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. That could end up being a bonus point once electric vehicles leave their specialized niches and embrace the majority of buyers. But here, clearly, the key issue is production. Can Stellantis produce enough electric vehicles? I don't think they can. I think the key winners this year in Europe will be Volkswagen and Tesla, simply by virtue of production, ability to produce the number of EVs 
to sell those EVs. Now, one key thing that we need to point out here is that ICE vehicles, internal combustion engine vehicle sales are down 40% versus pre-COVID numbers. They will never ever recover. Now the truth is Tesla did actually deliver some vehicles in January. Model 3, they delivered 277, and the Model Y, they delivered 142. However, of course, those numbers will be at least 10 to 20 times greater than that in the third month of the year. So we're looking at March here to get a real idea of what's happened. So when we get to the end of the quarter, I'll report on the sales at the end of the quarter, and then we'll get a good idea of what's going on in the electric vehicle market in Europe. But I think we're going to see a much better indication of who the biggest players will be, probably in the third quarter of this year, once Tesla's factory in Berlin starts to ramp up production, once Volkswagen is ramping up their production as well, other car companies, we're going to see, yet yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how well they will ramp up production this year as well. As I said at the start of this video, I do think that we're going to see 40% plus months in Germany, at least by the end of this year. I think even December in Germany will be 50% electric vehicle sales. That's my prediction. I'm sticking with it. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Have a great day and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.